All right, today I'm working on one of these old cobalt 26 gallon oil free uh, air compressors. Uh, I got it from a guy I do a lot of handyman stuff for. He said that the pressure would go up to about 80 PSI and just stop and it keep running, keep running, keep running, go up to stay at 80 and would never shut off. So obviously there's some kind of sealing issue. Um, I mean, you, you have reed valves, you also have the actual piston seal itself. Uh, from what I've seen online, this one actually has a big issue with the piston seal. The lip of it will roll back. Uh, and I'm going, and that's what exactly happened to this one. The lip actually, the piston seal rolled back and it actually tore. And you can usually tell if the piston seal is uh, flipped back because it makes a fluttering, hissing sound. Uh, once it does because it'll sound normal relatively quiet. I know these are really loud um, But as soon as that lip rolls back you start hearing a <laughs> sound and That's usually the piston seal rolling back. So to take take the head of this uh, or the cover off there's uh, six Torx bits in each of these holes and there is also a Torx bit here that holds the uh, lever. All right taking that off So I'll put this one so then you have uh, the whole assembly here. Um, what you can do is you can you can actually sh shine a flashlight down in that bore of where the piston goes in and look around the whole edge of the lip and you can see if it's blowing out real easy. You don't have to take the motor off uh, to check to see if this is what failed on it. Um, so I'll, this one, I'm not going to take the whole pump assembly off. Uh, you can. It's, it's not much more work. Um, but what I did is I loosened up the three uh, fasteners that hold the whole pump assembly to the uh, main body. You got one here, one down there, and you got one down there. I believe they're 3 8 10 millimeters, somewhere around there. Anyway, and then um, that'll get the uh, whole assembly disconnected from the body. You gotta disconnect the uh, line that goes to the tank. I believe this is 5 8 Unscrew that. And also your wiring, you'll have to disconnect your neutral here. And there's a hot with a interconnect spade terminal here. And also uh, on the motor, there are two grounds you gotta disconnect. Just not loosen these, these are split, so you can just pull it off the side once these bolts are loose, leave the bolts in there. And this one, I just got it loosely mounted. I have the head unbolted, uh, the four bolts here, and I unscrew the hex head screw that holds the uh, piston or connecting rod in place. That, um, let me see if I can get you some better light here. There you go. This is a 5.5 millimeter Allen. This thing is on there tight because they have a Loctite on it. So what I found out, you can actually take one of these Taking one of the head bolts here. There's actually a couple of uh, slots in here, so when you're trying to uh, take that bolt out, that'll keep the uh, I guess you'd call this crankshaft or uh, crank sprocket, whatever you want to call it. It'll keep it in place while you can apply torque. Um, like I said, 5.5 millimeter. I don't have any hex head sockets, but I do have a bunch of the Allen wrenches. I mean, that thing is on there so much. I actually had to put it on there and took a pop wrench on the uh, Allen head tool just to break it loose. And it's a uh, right hand thread, it's normal thread. Don't worry about a backwards thread because that was one thing I was thinking about is, is this a right hand thread or is this possibly a left hand thread? And it, it's, a, it's a regular thread, so lefty loosey on this one. All right, so now that everything's taken loose, I'm gonna take everything over to the workbench. This one I've already been messing with, so yours is not gonna look like uh, how torn apart this is and also the uh, the way the piston set up Anyway, you can loosen it You can slide everything out. I'll show a picture somewhere along the lines of this video uh, Showing what that seal looks like anyway, Sorry, my workbench is messy All right, so the piston essentially looks like this It's it's been jumbled up. I've been beating on it. So ignore that but what you do have is you you got a piston, a uh, uh, connecting rod assembly here, and there's a seal. And this this ring right here is press fit onto the main body, and that's what holds the seal in place. 
and it's not easy to get off. I recommend if this is, if this is already busted, go ahead and I mean you can torch this. Um, you know, try to make keep the heat away from the bearing down here, but you can torch this to expand this metal. It'll make it easier to get off. Uh, but that comes right off. And this was the seal where I've been beating on it, busting it, everything. Yours is probably not gonna look this bad. But anyway, be careful because this cast aluminum breaks easy, and I ended up breaking the whole lip of it off in a couple of pieces. If I got them around here, like here's the two pieces that uh, there's one that like chiseled off. So I have some aluminum brazing rod and pretty much did the best I could and any imperfections I'm just going to put a little thin coat of RTV which I've already had here before um, they oh, and the reason why I'm doing this video you you can't just buy this for this model for this cobalt this model this model is uh, again the 26 gallon uh, compressor 155 psi and it is 99 Zero seven oh, crap. Come on, lighting. VLK one five eight two six oh nine. I believe they also make these um, there's a Coleman variant and there is also a Sanborn variant. Anyway. <clears throat> so it has a sixty five millimeter um so I took some measurements of the old seal. It's a 45 inner diameter and a 65 outer diameter, but the bore itself is about 60 millimeters, which is two and three eighths, which is this measurement here inside the bore. So that extra five millimeters is what actually goes into the wrap portion um, of the seal. So I looked around online and I found a seal on eBay. I think they also sell it. Uh, you probably get it on Amazon. And I found this one. It's uh, preformed. It has the correct outer diameter of uh, 65, and it's already got the lip already pre-bent. You can get them flat, but it's just a little harder to get it in. And the only problem is you're about an eighth of an inch um, off on the inner diameter, and I think that's where I had my problem with my first attempt at this. I put it in there. It ran fine, and believe it or not, right at 80 psi again, the lip blew backwards. And when I took it all apart, I found out that the area with the lip blown back, this thing, the inner diameter, like I said, is off, where it has a little bit of movement. I tried putting the RTV to hold it in place. I guess the, the pressure and the movement pushed it over. And so the side that was closest to the inner um, got blown out. So this needs to be somehow recentered. And I read online, there's another guy on, there's a website like all about air compressors or something.com where he said he put wire in here and glued it um, to center it. And so I took measurements of the inner dimer and the outer dimer here and found out that there's a one millimeter gap all the way around. And the closest thing uh, wire gauge to one millimeter is 18 gauge, which is like 1.024 uh, millimeters. So that's perfect. I actually have that too, so that works. So, what it is, I got a spool of solid solid wire. Solid wire would work best for this. Solid wire, cut it to length that would go all the way around. And here, this is a one that's already been stripped. Take a socket that's a little bit smaller than the um, the diameter of this. So when you roll it, the spring action, you know, it'll go back a little bit. But uh, anyway, I'll show you here what I'm talking about. All right, so take this, this is the bare wire, and try to keep this as smooth as possible. All right, this is, I'm doing this on camera. I can do it better if I didn't have one on camera. Anyway, try to do like a full turn on it so that way you got this. So you're going to place this. And see how that's where it's a smaller diameter, it kind of keeps its grip to it. And what you're going to do is, all right, so you got some over, well, let me take it off and put it in better position here. All right, so now you got your copper on there, and you got overlap. Well, you don't want the overlap, you want it to be pretty much, see that overlap right there? Again, this is sloppy because I'm doing it on camera. 
I've already got one made that looks perfect. And where you have that top overlap right there, go ahead and take a cold chisel like that right there, smack it, it'll cut the excess off. So it should be, if you have this right up against the top piece, your diameter should be perfect. And then what I do is, well, let's just, uh, um, let me zoom back out, sorry. So then once it's cut, I put it back in the vise, have the tips touch, and then I take a little bit of solder and just a blowtorch, just heat this one up and just barely touch it with solder. If I can get a, let me get closer here. Come on. Man, the focus on this stinks. Anyway, solder the tips together, it's one solid ring. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that on there and it grips it pretty well and it will evenly space this seal a whole lot better. Now maybe a little bit of a snug fit. And it's kind of hard to see, but anyway, that keeps this from from moving. I, I can do a better job without a hint. Um, I, th I think the guy that originally had this idea, he super glued it down and I'm probably gonna do the same or maybe put a little thin layer of epoxy down. So make sure it's all pushed down, it's flush. And the good thing about 18 gauge wire, um, it's about almost the same thickness as this seal here, so it's not gonna keep this ring from uh, coming back down on it. Um, if it does copper where it's malleable, it'll actually allow it to, to push down and possibly seal better. Um, so the next step, I'm probably gonna do this off camera because it's so hard to do it. But anyway, glue this ring down Put the seal on, make sure it's centered, make sure you know the lip of the seal is not over the copper. Make sure it's fully spaced out, it's perfectly centered. And what you're gonna do is you're pretty much gonna press this back down. I usually take this to the side, put it in some pliers and torch it a little bit, get it nice and hot where it's easier to slide on, kinda like when you slide a bearing on a shaft. Well, you're not blow torching it, but you know, you get the thing on the outside down where you get it hot, you get this part cold. Anyway, it'll make it easier to slide down. If you got a socket big enough, I mean, this is 45 millimeter, you're, you're gonna have to have a big socket, but usually what I do is just take a ball peen hammer and just kind of slowly tap around the edge until it's fully seated. Uh, you can take some seat clamps and go around all the edges, push it down and, and do that part. And then to get this back into the bore, you know, you're gonna to get to the point where you're trying to slide, you know, imagine the piston's still here. You're just going to have to work. Now, the piston will cause it to kind of grip that edge. And what I like to do is take a little pick with the flat side of it and just kind of push it in a little bit. And every time you keep pushing, it'll slowly work its way in until it eventually pops in. Um, I know this particular model uh, had a break in procedure of 30 minutes. And what you do is you leave the safety valve open, you leave the drain open. So once you assemble this all back together, um, it's probably a good idea to, to try to seat this ring um, in the bore, actually get the seals to match up properly, run it for 30 minutes while essentially not building any pressure, and then let it sit down, let the engine or the motor cool off, because this is aluminum. And once that's done, connect it and try to uh, start it up again. Now, again, the whole reason I'm doing this video is because it's a throwaway part, essentially. I mean, this this compressor is not made to last, but the seal, the brand new seal is like $7 um, shipped to my house. So I figured it's worth a shot. I got, you know, everything else to make it. Um, air compressor didn't cost me anything. If anything, I'm gonna turn it into a reserve tank. Um, but yeah, they wanted the whole pump motor assembly for like almost like $215. Which is which is outrageous because I mean you you can literally buy an air compressor brand new for that, but seven dollar seal, kind of worth tinkering with. Uh, hopefully the next shot you'll see is after it's been installed, and we'll see how much pressure builds um, in this if it fixes it. Uh, if you do see this video, I posted it. Uh, it means it's working. Hopefully, if not, I may I may post it anyway because maybe it's it's just a. 50-50 shot whether or not it works. The other guy said he did it and it works, so I'm trying this. Um, 
I'm gonna try it out, maybe use it for 30 days or so. If it works fine, I'll probably just sell it because I got another one. Um, but I'll uh, probably in the description, if it is working correctly over an extended period of time, um, and we'll go from there. Hopefully, like I said, next video should be you guys watching the the uh, it running. Well, looks like it's working.